Hey, 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 Facebook land, what is happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are just jumping on, I am, uh, we're going to start here in just a second or so. So, hey, if you guys are jumping on here, I'd love to see where you are in the world. Drop a comment in below and let me know where you are, uh, where you're hanging out, what's going on, what's shaking, what's new. Uh, cannot wait to have this discussion uh, today. So, uh, sorry, I got some of my eye for crying out loud. Hey, Debbie Morrow from Colorado. Uh, I'm coming from Sydney. It's warm here. It's not warm in Denver and Colorado Springs. There's snow on the ground out there, you guys. It's crazy. So, uh, hey, let's uh, let's have a quick uh, a quick little roll call. Brad Johnson. Hey, buddy, what's happening? Hope you're doing fantastic. I need well, I'll leave you, and, you and I got to connect when I get back from Australia. So Donna Sambula in the house. Uh, we got Debbie Morrow in. Uh, from Colorado Springs, we got, oh my gosh, we got Rebecca Randall in from New Orleans. Uh, Rebecca, happy uh, belated birthday. I appreciate you. Love you very much. Chad, what's happening, buddy? Hope you are doing awesome. We got Donna in the house from Ohio. Josephina in the house. Josephina, I think, is from Las Vegas, if I remember correctly. 99% um, sure on that one. Josephina, tell me you're in Vegas. I'm pretty sure you're in Vegas. Jan Pollard in the house from Colorado as well. Super cold there. Carol, welcome, welcome. Hope you are doing awesome, you guys. Oh my gosh, look at all these people. We got Mary, Mary Franchella. How are you from San Diego? Got to, a chance to go hang out with Mary on her uh, on a boat with her. It was awesome a few months ago. It was awesome. Corey Johnson, welcome, buddy. What's happening? Um, let's uh, Chad. I keep forgetting that Chad's in Nebraska. I've never been to Nebraska. I follow um, Big Bang Theory and Penny on uh, Big Bang Theory is from Nebraska. That's like my only connection to Nebraska, and I love Big Bang Theory. So uh, we got Tears in the house from Colorado Springs as well. Uh, and okay, you guys, let's have uh, let's have a little chat. So good day from Sydney, Australia. I am uh, I'm down under here uh, for the next couple of weeks. I'm doing a couple of speaking events down here in Sydney, and uh, so I it's uh, I don't know it's Thursday I think for you guys in the states. It's actually Friday uh, Friday at twelve fifteen uh, here in Australia. So I just got here yesterday. So it's been of a bit of a whirlwind. So. You guys, um, I have been on webinar after webinar after webinar and learning a ton of stuff over the last couple of days since I've been here. And uh, hey, David, oh my gosh, David, how are you, my friend? Oh my gosh, uh, I love David. If you guys don't know David, he's hysterical and uh, he runs a great uh, audio visual company. So, um, okay, look, we I think it's time we have a little, uh, little chit chat, those of us uh, that are in business. So, uh, this is not coming from any place other than it's a little bit of a rant of mine, um, but for what it's worth, here's the here's the deal. You, you know, gosh, let's see, how do I even start this? I've been in business pretty much my whole life. I don't know anything else. I just don't. I used to come from a, an amusement park and a water park. I moved to Los Angeles to work in the movie business. Ended up winning an Oscar in the movie business a couple of years after I started in that business. Um, I've helped countless entrepreneurs. I run a bi business coaching program. Uh, I, I'm a consultant. I, I have a lot of experience around business and the business of business. And um, I, it's really important, I think, that all of us as entrepreneurs get on the same page about what we're actually doing in business and what our businesses are actually designed to do. So I literally have up on my phone, I literally got so frustrated this morning um, because I saw a couple of, of posts of people on Facebook that it's like, I don't know, it's like you, you're running a business and you start a business or you join a business and you, you know, maybe you're in network marketing, maybe you run a housing company, maybe you run a real estate agency, maybe you're a mortgage broker, a massage therapist, um, whatever it is, you guys, this whole idea that we don't mean business and stand proud of being in business, I, I just think like we got to stop it. If it, you know, I, I get, so, so anyways, let me, let me start where my little rant started. So I went and actually looked at the definition of business in the dictionary. So I pulled it up and here's the definition of business, a person, partnership, or corporation engaged in commerce, not talk of anything but commerce, but in engaged in actual commerce, manufacturing, or a service, profit seeking enterprise or concern. 
profit seeking enterprise. Okay, here's the thing. If you are going to start or join or pretend you're in business and then do not talk about how that business makes money, you do not own a business, nor should you be talking about it as if it is a business. Okay, and, and here's an example. I think there are lots of people that say they start a business. Um, uh, they start a business, but then they don't do anything to talk about the business. They get so focused on products and how much they love their products, or they get focused on the compensation plan if it's network marketing. And they, we, we forget that we're actually in business, which is an exchange of products, goods, or services for money. And that money, hopefully, at least, makes more, there's more of that money coming in than the expenses it takes to run, manage that business, okay? So here's the challenge. The challenge is, is I think we've got a lot of folks out there that are pretending to be in business. Now look, there are lots of people that should be in business that I think aren't. There are millions of people that I believe should start a home-based business, probably network marketing is the easiest thing. Um, it's the only business model I know of that for a very teeny amount of investment um, and a little bit of reinvestment into your business, you have the ability to go out and crank open a, an entire vault of cash on a residual ongoing basis, right? There are plenty of ways to do business, right? You could go become a real estate agent. You could trade stock and do day trading. You could do all kinds of stuff. You could code plans. You could code, uh, code computers. You could do, like, there's just a ton of stuff out there that you could do from an entrepreneurial standpoint. But let's get clear that if we're in business, then we're actually in business and we mean business about our business, okay? It's like this. If I love a McDonald's hamburger, right, it doesn't necessarily mean that I should just because I love the McDonald's cheeseburger, well, actually, I love a quarter pounder with cheese, no onions, no pickle side of, side of signature sauce or tartar sauce, right? I love, I hate to admit it, but I love McDonald's, okay? I love McDonald's. But just because I love the product of McDonald's does not mean that I would logically go out and mortgage everything I own to buy a McDonald's, right? So if I love the quarter pounder with cheese, no onions, no pickles, side of tartar, right? Then maybe I'm just better being a customer. And that's okay. McDonald's needs millions of me to support their commerce producing enterprise. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much for the hearts and the likes and all of that, I appreciate it. Um, sometimes it's okay to be a customer, right? And, and this happens I think a lot probably more in the network marketing space than, than other professions. But it's like, look, if I love this pen, I'm not gonna necessarily go out and start a business around this pen unless I am believing that I can sell these pens for a profit and treat my business like a business, right? And there's all these cliches, treat your business like a business, not like a hobby and all this stuff. The reality is this, if you're gonna start a business, whatever the business that is, then you better be standing proud for that business being a profit, right? A, a profit center, if it's not at least for profit and you're not doing things, moving your business in profit. And by the way, I don't care how anybody wants to spin it, my opinion is, that your business has to sell something, right? Maybe it's marketing, maybe it's an agency and you're taking a piece of the pie. What, there's a gazillion different business models for you to run, but they have to be a business model that exchanges money for whatever your business offers. Otherwise, you're just, like, it's useless, right? Unless you join a network marketing business just for the tax deductions or whatever, and that's cool too, but then I wouldn't run around on Facebook saying that you have a business, right? If you're in a business and you just love the products and you don't wanna talk about the compensation plan and you don't wanna talk about how you get paid and you don't wanna understand how you get paid and you don't wanna understand how to fully execute the business model that you're in, that's cool, like super cool. But to pretend that a business is not a business just because you love the products, I just say go be a customer of whatever product you love and don't futz around with the hassle of running the business. It takes a lot of willpower, it takes a lot of chutzpah, it takes a lot of um, grit to really make a business profitable. And secondly, if I might add, um, I don't know of a single business that's super 
profitable, where the business owners, the entity, the corporation, the person, the entrepreneur, the solopreneur, the mompreneur, the dadpreneur, the potpreneur, whatever, the entity that owns that business, doesn't reinvest. I'm having a call with our Platinum Inner Circle members this morning, which is my business coaching, mastermind, training, accountability program. And one of the things that we were talking about is this idea of business about business. And I, sh I shared with them that in one of the businesses that, that I owned, we took 80% of the revenue. So every dollar that came in from that business, we took that, and this was a network marketing business, every dollar that came in, 80 cents of that dollar went right back into the business, whether it was investing in the team, whether it was investing in better technology, whether it was investing in going to events, whether it was invested in putting on events, whether it was invested in doing contests where it was cash, whether it was investing in more product, whether it was investing in more efficiency in that product, whether it was investing in stupid little trinkets that we gave away as prizes in recognition. 80% of what we took in, we put back into the team, back into, uh, back into the business model. In my accountability program, what we call it the Platinum Inner Circle, I invest a huge percentage of the revenue that comes in from that back into that group. Things like we do really great hotel rooms. We bring in an AV, an AV guy uh, to do AV. We buy lunch for everybody every month, right? We do things to reinvest back into that business because we want our customers to have the best possible experience and be treated and felt like rock stars so they continue that business relationship with us. And so I just, it's, it's, it's very flustering to me as a business consultant, strategist, investor. You know, I, I, I do a lot of investing in companies and I always, one of the first things I ask is, what percentage are we putting back in? How are we increasing the amount it takes uh, that we can invest in getting more customers? How are we increasing um, what we're investing in infrastructure? How are we increasing efficiencies in the marketplace? How are we bringing our products, goods, or services to, to bigger places, bigger markets, expanding the markets, expanding who we're talking to, expanding the network that the people we can talk to? How are we investing in? And if a business owner go, like has the donut look on their face, which is, if that business owner doesn't invest in their business, um, I know, just as an investor dude, that they're not meaning business about their business. Right, I, 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 and you can, if you listen to how people talk, and maybe you have this conversation with other folks, and maybe it's just a little tweak in how we talk, but if, you go, if your go-to conversation is how to get things for cheap, your business is gonna take that, take that stance, right? Take Walmart, for example, right? Walmart is predicated on cheapness. That's their shtick. Their shtick is come to our store, with a hundred bucks and you're gonna walk out with more crap in your cart for a hundred bucks than if you took that same hundred bucks and you went to Nordstrom. That's their, that's their USP, their unique selling proposition. Get more crap um, if you come to our store with a hundred bucks, okay? Um, we have to seek profit, which is, you know, I buy this bottle for $5 and I sell it for 10. There's a profit there. How much of that do I reinvest back into uh, back into the business, okay? So, so important, and here is what I'm gonna say. If your business is not profitable, or if your business is, you're not investing back in your business with learning, like if you're an entrepreneur, and you're not investing in your own education, and your own customers, and your own, um, your own staff, and your employees, and, and the people that work around you, then, for, for goodness sakes, find a business coach, find somebody that's going to kick you in the butt to help your business be more profitable, right? Because at the end of the day, let's, let's like really cut this down to the bare bones basic of it. Um, at the end of the day, oh, I wish, oh, this would be so much more fun if I had a dollar bill in front of me. Um, at the end of the day, here's, here's the easy way to do it. Let's, oh, gosh, I wish I had a dollar bill in front of me. See my hotel room in Sydney and I got mess on all sides of it. So, Let's pretend this pen is a dollar bill, okay? This pen is a dollar bill. This represents a dollar of your capital, of your investment into your business. Well, the reality is what you really want is for this pen to go out into the marketplace, do its little work. It's out here working for you, working for you. And the idea is that it goes out, and remember this is a dollar, it goes out and it brings back 
more dollars back into your business. We call that a return on investment, right? There's also return on your energy, right? But, but if this dollar bill goes out and it doesn't bring any friends back and it comes back and it's even less than it, than it when, when it went out the door, you got yourself a nonprofit. If it goes out into the marketplace and works and it comes back just how it went back, it's a net gain, it's a net gain of zero, right? It's just a, a break even business. But if it goes out into the marketplace, well, this worked out actually better than a dollar bill. This was total random. Um, but it goes out and it brings back some friends. That's a return on your investment. And your business needs and wants to thrive with profitability. So if you're running around saying that your business is something other than a business, you're gonna project that into the marketplace. I literally watched a couple of posts and, and I'm gonna to try to contain my disdain and um, just borderline anger for how this was presented. But I watched, um, I watched a, a series of posts by a top leader in a network marketing organization talk about his company in a way that was trying to pretend that it was something that it wasn't. It was trying to pretend that it was not a network marketing operation, right? Network marketing, it's a very simple concept. You go get a friend who gets a friend who gets a friend and it, and it, it builds marketing instead of paying word, instead of putting marketing on a, a CEO, instead of doing billboards and commercials and radio and television, they put that money back into paying a, a, a group of distributors, partners or brand ambassadors for bringing back customers to the table, right? That's, that is engaged in a business. You guys understand that, right? They're selling a cell phone for $100. They're gonna pay out $25 through the field, as we call it, or whatever. That's engaged in business. The, but to then go, oh, well, no, we're not really a business. We're a personal development company, or we're not really a business. We're just here to, to spread love and kindness. Well, we got to talk about love and kindness and personal development in the context of business, because how do you then go out and have conversations about business and not sound like a, 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 a dum dum? <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. So, anyways, you guys. I just, I, I had to get on here, jump on here. Um, I think it's important that all of us in business, whatever level we play, if you're brand new starting out in business or you've been a seasoned entrepreneur and business owner for years and years and years, can we please get back to having a conversation about how amazing our products, goods, and services are and how they serve the marketplace, but also recognize that our job is to move those products through distribution and those products as they go through distribution, spin off a profit and part of that profit that comes back to us um, needs to be reinvested because at the end of the day, he or she who pays the most to acquire a customer is always going to win. Let me say that again. He or she or a corporation or business that is willing to and able to invest more in acquiring a customer will always win. Okay. Um, let me give you an example. Um, well, I'll give you a consulting example. So I'm a, con I'm a consultant and Bob, Bob Jones is a consultant. I'm just making up a name. Bob and I are both approaching to talk to a potential customer um, about a $10,000 consulting gig, right? Bob figures out how to not even invest in that customer. So I'll say, I'll just email you the proposal. I'll do it really quick on my phone. I'll just email you the proposal. Right, and I go okay. Well, I really want this consulting gig. My profit margin on a ten thousand dollar consulting gig is going to be seven thousand um, bucks. So for fifty bucks, I'll send him a package in the mail. I'll take him out to dinner. I'll send his wife a package. I'll send his kids a teddy bear. I'll send his office a banner that says, "Hey, welcome to the Casey Everhart Consulting family." You know, I'm now investing. Say I invest a thousand dollars to get that customer. All things being held constant, Bob cheaps out, I overdo it in making the customer feel special before they ever join us. Who's gonna get the customer? Now, some of you will go, well yeah, but what if Bob's the better consultant? Bob may very well be the better consultant. But in this conversation, it doesn't really matter. What matters is how the customer perceives us 
before we've ever executed on what they're actually buying. Okay, so I just encourage you from just a dude uh, that's been in business for a long time that get yourself in the mode of understanding what your business is, understand that your business is there to thrive on profit. In order for there to be profit, there has to be sales. In order for there be, to be sales, you have to have a good product that's into the marketplace, right? And then we gotta have some fun, right? Uh, I know most business owners are in business to do one of two things, save time or make more money, right? So by the way, if you can talk to your customers, most customers, remember, I'm going off on a little tangent, but we'll wrap this up. Um, people only buy solutions, you guys. They only invest in solutions. So if you can't clearly articulate what problem your customer has and how you, your product, good, or service solves that, you're going to be in, 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 you're going to lose to a marketer because that's what marketers do. We explain and tell people what their problem is and how we solve it. So people invest in solutions. And number two, invest in your business. Pick a percentage, pick a number, whatever it means to you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. We can jump on a private chat. You can just private message me. I'm happy to have this conversation with you. And if you're in a business where people um, are making money around you, awesome. If you're in a business where a lot of people are not making money and you hear things like, oh, well, we're having a lot of fun, but we're not making any money, then that's cool. That's super cool. But you also need to make sure and be clear on why you're actually doing it. So if you want to just have a nonprofit and help the community, that's awesome. That's awesome. We have to have tons of network market network, network uh, nonprofits. Sorry, nonprofits help communities, right? I think businesses help actually help community as well. I, I mean, I could go off on an entire tangent on nonprofits because nonprofit is nothing more than a tax designation doesn't really even say anything other than it gives people an excuse to not make money. But um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a time for, that's a different time and a different video. So anyways, guys, I hope you're having an amazing day. I am happy to have a chat with you. If you have any questions or you want to rant on me or help me or figure out what, I, if I've said something that sparks a nerve with you, but uh, happy to help. I'm just here to help. I'm a dude that helps people across pretty much every, uh, every spectrum of business. I've been doing it for years and years and years and um, happy to help in any way I can. So if you got some value out of this and you kind of like it or you like what I'm, you know, like what we're talking about, um, drop a comment in. I like hearing, hearing comments. Uh, I got a, a little bit shoddy reception here um, down in Sydney, but uh, I'll, I'll respond to you guys. And if I can help in any way, don't hesitate to private message me. And with that, you guys, I appreciate it. Jeez, we've been on 23 minutes. I did not mean it for going longer than 10, so I apologize. Well, I really don't, actually. Uh, anyways, guys, hope you have a great day. Go out and sell some product. Move your product through the distribution channel. Take some of that profit. Reinvest that back into your customers and watch your investment and your return on that investment go to work for you. So until next time, guys, have a great day and g'day.